Hey, do you know a local band? Do you want to have their music played on our podcast here, <laughs> reminiscentfm.com? Hey, what do you say? What do you know? That could happen. It could happen for you now, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, tell the nice folks about the deal of the fucking year. <laughs> well, Pat, let me tell you. Yeah, we're trying to open our platform up to up and coming bands to have their music talked about and played in its entirety within this show embedded forever until the end of time, until the internet ceases to exist because the climate is too hot. The oceans have risen and we've all been distinct for hundreds of years, but your music will still be in last our podcast. Last week, the ad read, you really kept the existential dread out of last week's ad read. <laughs> Um, basically 10 bucks, we'll put your song on the show at the beginning for a bit and then in full at the end, we'll talk about it, um, get it out there. It's 10 bucks. Uh, it'll help us with our hosting. And instead of like doing stamps.com or whatever, the f- <laughs> uh, we want to, we'd rather help local music thrive. So if you have a favorite band, let them know. Maybe they're interested. Maybe they're not, whatever. Um, we thought this might be a neat, a neat way to kill two birds with one stone. And we also just genuinely want to hear new music. So, um, you know, the first four get it free yeah there's a couple slots of free ones still available um to 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 kind of get this ball rolling see how it works see you know work through the kinks and everything like that Um, but we're excited about this um you know and and hopefully you guys are excited about it too um we put this out on twitter and it kind of exploded you guys seem to be really you know like into the idea so uh yeah we're excited yeah you can go to reminiscentpodcast.com slash sponsor to it's self-service. You upload your files, your artwork, you know, write your bio, give us everything that uh, we'll need to put in the episode. And I think it'll be fun. You know, I was like listening to this podcast on creative entrepreneurship the other night. And I was like listening as I was kind of falling asleep. And it was like this episode brought to you by Kia Sorrento. And I was like, what the f- like Kia Sorrento, the car of creative entrepreneurs. <laughs> like, there goes the Kia <laughs> Sorrento deal, folks. We need you to promote your local bands on our show to keep the lights on. Because we just squashed all chances we had with Kia Sorento. <laughs> but anyway, it just didn't make sense. So I well, think now it- that we're in it, <laughs> f- you Kia Sorento, <laughs> never driving that car. We're in it now. We're never getting it back. Oh God! So I just think it'd be fun to play music on the show. You know, really make it more than just about me and Pat talking about our lives. Like, let's get other people involved. Have a lot of fun. All discover new music together. It'll be great. Yes. One last thing. Hard to sh- talk a car. You're bad. <laughs> Probably wouldn't get me to point B. You know what I mean? It's just tough. <laughs> anyway, let's start the show. What is going on, everybody? I'm Tom. And I'm Pat. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. Oh, God. Anyways. The hype train continues. We get to be happy and upbeat for uh, two weeks in a row, which is unheard of right. in the reminiscent <laughs> universe. Um, do you, I mean, right? I don't know. I feel good about this one. Yeah. Two pretty high energy, super positive weeks in a row. And this one goes out to, was it Dylan who was like really onto this? Shit? And um, we kind of fast tracked it. So, you know, we talked in the post show last week about like, we had gone through a little bit of our backlog for planning purposes, you know, um, but we had sent out a tweet a long time ago, basically, you know, describing, and we might do this again, you know, if you want to keep an eye out saying, here's our next four shows that we plan to record. Um, if you have any takes, we'll read them on the show. And Dylan Hyden stepped up and said this, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. He came in hot and I appreciated it. Um, so much love is the best love song to come out of the 2000s. I know. We're getting <laughs> Jesus. after the first I know, coming in. <laughs> Scorch it blazing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Tom's favorite thing I've ever said, I think. And so I like to make him happy. I like to make you happy. Okay, one more time. Blazing. Okay, uh, the piano. Th- this is Dylan. Quote, the piano, the trumpet, the emotion, Bryce can evoke when singing. And the fact that he plays every instrument for Rocket Summer just does it all. Crazy. Too true, Dylan. There's no song that makes me happier than So Much Love. Oh, wait, there's more. Yeah, that's right, there's more. <laughs> uh, dot, 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 quote, 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 quote. And if you didn't use the line, you look like the songs that I've heard my whole life coming true, 
on every girl you found attractive in high school, then you are either lying to yourself or we all didn't live the same lives in high school like I thought. So he is coming in, <laughs> reminiscent Twitter, is getting f***ing riled up. And I'm loving it. <laughs> there, was a, there was a tweet exchange the other day where Gabby and Jeremy were talking. And I was like, oh, sh this is like loosely fight clubbish. So it's getting heated. <laughs> reminiscent Twitter is, is uh, taking it up a notch. Quarantine has not treated uh, reminiscent Twitter very well. <laughs> or it's tre treated it very well. Turn up the mother heat it's blazing anyway dylan much love appreciate the feedback so much um, love tom it was so much love indeed um <laughs> is it the i mean fuck, let's just start it now is it the best love song to come out of the 2000s i forgot how in like absolutely incredible not only dude, this, this song but the whole band is it's so fucking good dude it's, so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pleasant little surprise that you like so like we were like, oh, what's your favorite artist? Like, oh, Motion City, blah, blah, blah. You know, MCR, TBS, all that stuff. Like for the show, what we do. And then you come back and you're like, I forgot this song is my favorite song of all time. <laughs> like, how is it hidden in my brain in that way? I don't know. Um, not only is it the best love song in the 2000s, it's the best song ever written. And music, just music in general. <laughs> nice try, Gregorian chants. So much love by the Rocket Summer is better than anything ever released by mankind. Especially the Beatles. Okay, well, oh, uh, man, you, you caught me in my own... Uh, I was ready to throw Gregorian chants out the window, but I don't know if I'm ready to <laughs> talk to Beatles. <laughs> Damn you, Gregorian chants, foiled again. Um, no, super tremendous, and maybe the key to world peace. More on that later. Oh, um, oh yeah. Do yeah. we have any? <laughs> do we have any fun facts this week? Okay, I well, Dylan already touched on it. I it blew my mind when I found out that, like a few others, right? So we have um, early Foo Fighters. I guess Dave Grohl recorded everything himself. The almost with Aaron Gillespie, he recorded every instrument. Bryce Avery does it on the Rocket Summer. He not only performs everything on the record, he produces them. I don't know if that means he engineers and mixes and masters them as well, but that is an immense amount of talent that I super wish that I had. Cause it's always been my dream to do like a full band, one man band thing. I've done a few songs in the past, but are they so much love? Not even no. close. It's so hard to write music alone for me anyway like i work so much better when i can like vibe off of someone else's riff or rhythm or whatever and i cannot believe first of all if you go back to the album do you feel we've talked in the past about like songs like or the first three songs of an album like how fucking hard they hit right yellow card uh, ocean avenue comes to mind the first like six songs on this album could all be like perfect album openers um, i i forgot how much of this album I knew and how much I loved this record. I don't know why my brain just buried this back in like right? 2009 or whenever I stopped listening, but damn, what an album, what a song. Wherefore art thou, Bryce? Why does that happen? <laughs> why does that happen? You know what I mean? Like legitimately, you're like, man, I forgot this for a full like seven years until <laughs> Dylan tweeted at us in Austin. And I think a couple other people mentioned it on Twitter. Um, or we're looking forward to maybe we have been hinting that the Google Doc, which is a f***ing mess, but oh we finally gosh. got around to doing this episode. Thanks for being patient, <laughs> or sorry for everything, everybody, all the time, as usual. But um, yeah, you're like, how did I not listen to songs like for like seven full years? And then you get you like live in it for like three months again and wear it and love it and you know go to bed with it and stuff. Um, I two other you know examples which are less impressive than the ones you mentioned. I think Andrew WK does a little bit of that. And uh, Lenny Kravitz, when we were doing some pre-show work, I was, it was the one I couldn't think of. But I think he tried that for a bit, maybe less successfully than the others mm -hmm. we've mentioned, of course. But I just was more upset that I couldn't remember Lenny Kravitz's name more so than using him as an example for the show. But, okay, uh, we got a, we've got any dotes, dude? I'm sorry, that okay. didn't even work. That did not work. <laughs> anecdotes. Do we have any anecdotes? I've got one more fun fact that... I actually like yelled out loud when I saw this. I was just like trying to find anything on the Rocket Summer. And on their main Wikipedia page, it says like they released their, you know, first music video for the album So Much Love, directed by Shane fucking Drake. Who Shane. How many times have we talked about this dude in the past like two or three months? <laughs> he does everything. Honestly, honestly, eighty five percent of the time, if I had to guess. Like <laughs> 
shout out Adam Schlesinger always, but you know, we're learning some more names and movers and shakers and things like that. Shane Driggs, he's, he's around music video guy, right? For those who have just joined us this week. Yeah. Which also, I mean, cause we just talked about, um, panic of the disco. Um, oh my God, he did what? Oh, my forever, the sickest kids. Oh too. my God. We just did that episode <laughs> last week. We just recorded it like maybe an hour ago because sometimes Dude. we double up, um, sneak peek behind the scenes there for a oh minute, but God. we should probably edit in somewhere like, oh my goodness, shit. just edit in the excitement <laughs> from this episode into that episode. And then people will know this was the Easter egg that they should have been looking out for. Jesus um, Christ. I can't believe that. But he did, um, Paramore, Hawthorne Heights, Fall Out Boy, Less Than Jig, Head Automatica. And I just mentioned Aaron Gillespie, The Almost. He also did all the music videos for The Almost. Oh, there you go. Damn it. <laughs> you should have said this sooner, baby. <laughs> oh, that's the one of the music videos he directed. It's um, one of the Almost songs that I know. <laughs> so that's just fun. Dude, I kind of don't even want to waste any time. This music video is the best version of what it is. If we're talking about best love songs of the 2000s, best song ever written. I don't know if you want to go right into the music video. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. Where do you want to give go? me? Let's do, let's stick to the format. Let's, I do have one memory and I think you mentioned you might have one as well, but I'll go first. I just, let's just, I don't, I'm excited as well. Let's just whew, the hype train. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to make the joke that I don't want to join the 27 club, but let's just remember not to get too involved with the scene. No, let's not get wrapped up in it. <laughs> what I'm saying, I don't want to die on my own toilet. You know what I'm saying? Um, weird 27 club, d- dark humor going on there. I actually, <laughs> should you edit that out? Leave it in. I don't know. It's up to you. Leave it on the cutting room floor. If you so choose anyway, memories. Um, I referenced the bike rides a lot that were a little less cheerful with say anything and uh, four years strong at the helm. Uh, after my sophomore year of college, perhaps, I do remember <laughs> our buddy Zach and I were just home for the summer. We should have had internships or something, but we just didn't. So we were not in a good place, <laughs> you know, just like <laughs> very unactive. Uh, or we were active, we were doing stuff, but it, none of it was too uh, in the right direction, probably. So uh, these bike rides, fueled by so much love, um, I want to say Doug and I, not listening to this song, but we were trying to see how far west we could go on like route eight or something. And we ended up, we were like, let's just go to Cleveland. And then we're like, (laughs) we got like 40 miles outside of area. Just like, for like, didn't like high school, total idiocy. Didn't think we needed to come back to forgot about that part. So we were just exhausted (laughs) laying on the side of the road. We called Jake Gordon. We were like, bring, can you bring us some Gatorade and come get us? He's like, where are you? It's like, (laughs) we're like too close to the Ohio border to like admit (laughs) what's been going on so like he luckily he found us like he was just i would just take route eight as far as you can we're you'll we're the two idiots on the side of the road and he like was really nice he brought gatorade and stuff but i don't think i would have gotten that far at all if this song wasn't on repeat i don't think just like slamming away there's so much juice in such a strange package because when you first listen you know it's kind of a soft you're like oh this is soft i I, this isn't for me i want to rock but the more you listen the more you're like this is everything I've ever needed in life <laughs> outside of music as well. Like I feel complete. This guy is packing some serious heat. It's like, he's like making a statement about how hard, like just cause you're doing like a breakdown or playing in a metal band doesn't mean you're going hard or doing something well necessarily. Like just cause you're playing the riff, you know, that riff, you know, which one I'm talking about. doesn't mean you're like going, you're hard or whatever. Now, I guess there's an elegance to punk simplicity or things like that, but this dude raps so much fucking like, it's like Elon Musk would be, from a battery standpoint, impressed with the way this dude packs so much into just a song in terms of energy <laughs> that it blows me away every time. What You're like, oh my God, this guy's going hard as fuck. He's going in. There's a sax out of nowhere. There's a music video moment later we'll talk about regarding the sax. But like, you're just like, oh, oh no, don't, oh no. You're like watching a train wreck in slow motion or something just like why and how don't do it don't even do it to them they don't deserve it no they've got a family but it it happens and it's so beautiful you're just like oh oh i don't know it's truly jarring to you know in such a soft seemingly soft package how much raw energy and just uh i can't say enough i'm gonna keep gloating I'll, i'll pass the torch anecdote wise back to you but lots of using this to get around the peninsula and back to lp on the bike uh in a very 
a different summer, <laughs> a more positive summer than the one I reference usually. Um, although, yeah, almost dying on the side of the road on our way to the Ohio border was uh, not the smartest thing. But thanks to Bryce, I almost made it. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple things here. Um, our buddy Tyler James, who we reference his band a lot in the show, they were like the hometown hero band, Still Frame Sky. He was like an insanely talented vocalist and guitarist and drummer multi-instrumental he actually recorded all the instruments on their first ep he toured with the rocket summer as their lead guitarist i think which was super cool to see that there were a lot of like really cool videos in his instagram story really was happy for my buddy like touring with this band that we all loved you know a while ago still do whatever um but another thing that was like really interesting to me is my sophomore year of college i was hanging out with this guy adrian who was in a super talented singer he played clarinet guitar keyboard sang he was like getting vocal lessons with the same person that Haley williams got vocal lessons from dude was legit and he won some contest where the rocket summer like when they were on tour i mean obviously like the band is bryce so when they tour they have you know other artists come on stage to perform but they were doing this thing where they were doing a competition to see i think it was the solo of so much love like post a video of yourself on instagram playing the saxophone solo on whatever instrument it is you play and if you win you get to perform the song on stage with us when we're in your town and my buddy adrian won the competition and he got to play the sax solo on his clarinet on stage and it was like so awesome like I saw a video of my buddy Adrian runs on stage and Bryce is like, everybody, Adrian, and like totally gave him center stage. And it was like, just so fucking cool. Like it felt like such a party in that room and like super positive. I just thought that was such a cool thing to do because I mean, even in the music video, if I were, I mean, my dreams of being like a one man band, I want five of me in the music video so i think it's not only cool that like bryce is like opening up the visuals of the band to people other than himself but he's also opening up the stage for other people to like take center stage from him most forward thinking band in the history of music i don't know you tell me. <laughs> it's so cool i thought it was so so awesome and the last anecdote that i have is i remember 2007 i was a dishwasher at eaton park which is like a perkins or a you know sm smaller regional denny's or whatever and we weren't allowed to listen to headphones while we were in the the dish room but when we were mopping and scrubbing the floors we were allowed to listen to headphones i don't really know maybe i just thought i can get away with it but my only memory of what I listened to while mopping the floors was this album and just listening to so much love on repeat while like, what do they call it? Deck brushing to like the floors, cleaning all the fucking gunk off of diner floors. And it was like the worst job in the building, but I was listening to so much love. And the memory of that experience was very positive again, because of this insanely good and infectious song so those are all my anecdotes <laughs> there you go i think what's interesting is you brought up the lyrics and I, I guess you know we're heading into the beginning of the music video as well but you were like what the f does this even mean I'm like, it doesn't have to mean anything man it either means nothing or it means everything i don't know if you want to read a few of them now like just to because i had never even thought about it <laughs> i never even questioned it at all but you're like does this mean what does this mean i'm like i have no idea I have absolutely no f***ing idea what he's talking about. I thought it might have been a typo, but on every lyric site that I can find, it says, hats need a beat like awake needs sleep. Okay, awake needs sleep. It's opposite, right? Like a pen needs a mm -hmm. page, but a pen kind of does have its purpose served by making contact with a page. To learn right, you need a mistake, okay? Hats need a beat. What the f***? Genius lyrics is not <laughs> helping me at all. I've got nothing. <laughs> What does it say? <laughs> it says nothing. There's nothing at all. Oh, they just don't even try. Okay. The, the Damn, whole page lyrics. is blank. <laughs> wow. That's, they have transcend. That's like, honestly, honestly, it's like Dr. Manhattan touching someone's forehead for the first time and they see light or different dimensions for the, it's just like genius lyrics saw truth in Bryce's work and said, <laughs> this goes beyond, this goes beyond genius lyrics. This is truly 
a higher art form for sure. I have seen truth. Here's something else. Lyricsbox.com. Hats need a beak with a K. What the f*** does that mean? <laughs> okay, like a baseball cap. Is it a beak? I mean... It's a brim. Yeah. I feel like... Well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> not, you think I'm going to question Bryce? Get the f*** out of here. Okay, now I'm seeing a no hearts way. need a beat. That makes more sense. Okay. Okay. So maybe it's not hats. Maybe it's hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Tom, Christ. I think there's one simple thing you need to learn. It's that when you go, when you, just don't question Bryce. That's it. That's the main <laughs> lesson. Bryce is truth. He is light. Um, he is pen. He is page. He is white. He is black. And when he leaves, I really wish that he'd come back. No. Um, yeah. So it's nonsensical, odd, you know, back and forth. I, when I said I had no idea what he was talking about, I thought you were right about the heads thing, but then you're like, yeah, it's hard needs to be, whatever. And that's great. Of course, that's what he means. Okay. <laughs> uh, moving along. In the music video, he starts on a piano, perhaps, obviously. Not a scene haircut. We played this game recently. Scene haircut mm. or not scene haircut. Just long hair, I think. Dude, can I tell you that th this hair in this video is what I lusted over in high school. I wanted this hair exactly i think it is the sexiest look in the world i think bryce avery in this video is the sexiest man alive i am in love with the way he looks in this video i wanted it so badly for myself and i just kind of uh half committed never full sent to it and um <laughs> gave a totally different look i don't think i don't think it is seen here but it's the best hair ever a lot of best well in this new video. follower of bryce i will tell you that sexual attraction is not uncommon for our new followers and it is a <laughs> on your journey towards truth it'll something that come to be part of the experience and the warmth overall but do not be shocked by how you feel <laughs> the church of bryce <laughs> the church of bryce um so we're dealing with a magic piano we got a magic piano here folks yep the music video concept is rather simple comes out of the piano. First, we see the band, right? We're coming in. You're like, oh, they're going to come out in time for the first chorus. Hold on to your f***ing socks. <laughs> Keep them on because they're going to get rocked off later. Soft chorus. They're still setting up. Oof. I was like, oh. Yeah, going down hey. to the soft chorus the first time around is ballsy. But he knows what a hit he has on his I hands. wanted to question. I wanted to question Bryce, but then I said, what have you learned before? What have you learned before? And the answer... <laughs> is to never question Bryce. This man <laughs> lets his band set up when other men might have rocked out too soon. The wad hath not doth been blown today in thine pants Jesus or in thine Christ. studio. Um, <sighs> so they're setting up and they're like, okay, drumsticks pop out, people coming out, they're setting up. It's like, okay, we got a band on our hands. Who's gonna lead, <laughs> sing and play guitar? Also Bryce. We got Bryce! <laughs> Power move or not to power move? Two video, two, two, two instruments in your own video. He does that live. He switches back and forth. That's fucking awesome. So it's just part of the act. It's yeah. natural. Okay. So he comes in and uh, rocks the fuck out with the hair at the mic, the way he does it on the Wearing piano as well. Wearing the jacket. Wearing the, you know, quick shout out to the hoodie under the, you know, the jacket. Damn look, good luck. It's been around for longer than I thought. Slash, I'm very shitty at fashion. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh, people have, people seem to be doing that uh, hoodie under the jacket thing. Me, circa 2017. This music video got <laughs> came out in 2009. <laughs> like, oh, good for you, hoodie under the jacket. I'm the worst. Okay. Um, or Bryce is just forward thinking. Um, okay. Now... Let's like, we're like, okay, they came out of the piano. Maybe the piano is big enough. Maybe it's not a magic piano. It is a magic piano. What comes next? What comes next? I'll tell you what comes next. <laughs> not a member of not the band. <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't sure if you were reading along with me on the, on the notes. I, I wasn't. Was like, this is, this is going to be seamless. Tom, <laughs> tell the good folks at home what comes next. I'll tell you. Never mind, friend. <laughs> I was fact-checking when this music video came out. 
Uh, gotcha, gotcha. I appreciate it. Sorry, we're on different waves lengths, but it's all into the plan of Bryce, and I will stay true to that plan, and it is all part of his plan. Um, women. There you go. Oh. Some women come out. Okay, it's a party now. They've come to see the show. Um, lock us up. Yeah, incarcerate. Every time gets me like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> d- don't even. Why? What? It's just like, yeah, let's f***ing go, dude. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I love it so much. And, you know, um, he's going back and forth from instruments. The lyrics are starting to go like, mm, 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 mm. It's honestly, I feel like, you know, everything's making sense. Now we're getting a skateboarder comes out of the magic piano. It's like, okay, are we, are we trans, transitioning from different social circles here? Are we, are we bringing people together here in the, in the house that Bryce built? Is this is what happening? You're welcome, son. No shirt, no shoes, no problem. You come on in, you have a seat. You listen to what Bryce has to say, okay? That's what we're going for here. Elderly couple, very confused when they pop out of the piano. Starting to get a little weirder, I'll be honest. But then they look, who do they see, Tom? Who do the elderly people see? They see they everyone see else. <laughs> they see well, Bryce. Well, that's true. But I was kind of going for, I was gonna just milk this Bryce thing for as long as we can. They see Bryce <laughs> is who they see. And they get the f- out of that piano and they start cutting a damn rug oh that's what they start doing going for oh it. yeah they are happy f- as <laughs> they're like oh no we're gonna get robbed <laughs> just kidding it's bryce we can we are actually i was nervous about coming through the piano to the church of bryce i shouldn't have second guessed bryce that's the real message here okay next is what's interesting and i want to go on a side like sometimes we talk about the eerie scene here yeah. right on the show a lot of our listeners are from our hometown of erie pa some like greaser rockabilly type couple <laughs> comes out of the piano next um which is a good hard times um headline where it's like rockabilly son of rockabilly couple still not even sure what the is going on i think is the headline <laughs> um <laughs> but there's a there was an old band in erie and i don't know if you can speak to this maybe better than i could um called maddie b and the dirty pickles which was like a buddy holly era clean guitar stand-up bass band I don't know if every scene had one of these. I just assumed they did growing up. Um, tweet at us at underscore reminiscent FM if your band had maybe not that genre, but a Maddie B type band that was just different. The guy that was doing something different totally for the different. sake of it. Um, I, I My mind just went immediately to Maddie B when I saw this couple. Did you, How about you? <laughs> yeah. No, it was definitely like they dressed up as Maddie B for Halloween for this video or something. Like it... <laughs> And the day, yeah, totally. But you were saying like an ex girlfriend of yours, her mom even knew about Maddie B. Like in the Erie scene, like he was like <laughs> kind of a like a pseudo celebrity in, in in Erie County at least. Yeah, he was like a big deal. I felt like I mean he played very good music first of all, and it was like the look, the vibe. It was almost like super ahead of its time. And my my girlfriend's mom didn't like secular music. The two people that got passes were train and Michael Buble. And I remember one mm. time she came back from like Sarah's, which was like an old ice cream and burger bar, like very, yeah. st- like stuck in time, very quaint, very awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right by the peninsula. Shop. Not stuck yeah. in time. It just, it was supposed to be like a fifties era drive-in. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Very, very period piece. Right. Um, and she was like, I was just at Sarah's and I, I, I heard this incredible band, like someone your age, Maddie B and the Dirty Pickles. And I was like, no f***ing way. <laughs> like, <laughs> did our world just Maddie collide B. somehow? <laughs> like, I know. It was, it was crazy. And, you know, maybe. Also, looking back, maybe she had like the greatest taste in music ever. Michael Bublé. <laughs> and I like, Train gets a f***ing pass with me, dude. I f***ing oh, go hard riffs. for Train. Not only are they from Erie, or at least Pat Monahan, yeah. um, from the Erie area. Um, yeah, don't even get me started on Drops to Jupiter. Anyway, they Maddie B, uh, trendy good. pick for her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they used to go to New York and play bar shows and shit, and we'd be like, I thought that was so cool. I'm like, what life are you living, Maddie B? Damn, you dread, yeah, you're so mystical. Anyway, um, I remember being at a show and looking, it was like a battle of the bands or something. I looked over and it was like this, you know, kind of chubbier kid next to me. And I was like, what is this? Trying to get a, you know, like, do we like this? Do we not? Like when you're a teen, you're like either in or out. And he's like, I think you're asking the wrong question, man. I think you're, uh, what you need to know is that what he does, he's very good at it. And I'm like, who the f*** are you, man? You know, like, it's like, and then he disappeared in the floor or something. I'm like, why are you talking like this? It was so strange. I'm like, that's an interesting way to look at it. He is 
playing Buddy Holly style music very well. I f with Buddy Holly pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> one of his songs my wife and I danced to at our wedding. But when yeah. I was 14 at this show, I was like, listen, guy, what just, who the, f what's the name of the fucking band, man? Like, he's like, <laughs> it is what he does well that matters. Uh, anyway, it's like, Jesus Christ, Jedi Council going to fucking execute me after this, after the show. Uh, anyway, um, okay, back to the, back to, uh, back to the, uh, the party developing in this room. Everyone's crawling out of the piano in the middle of the music video. Um, we got sax, Tom. Mm. Sax comes next. Uh, do you want to talk about the breakdown? Your friend got to play this. Um, I, I think w for me, this falls into the same category of like, even kind of taking like, not th sax is, is bad, but like, you know, I don't know. There's so much energy that comes. I just, I think it fits perfectly. It adds so much. It's just like, how many loosely soft things can we gather around and go hard as using <laughs> and just kind of mock people who pretend to be hard, but don't really bring any thunder at all. And they're just like stupid. I don't I, like, it's just like, sure. Have an old guy pull a sax out of the piano and just keep rocking our fucking faces off. I don't know, like fully into the church of Bryce, angry at people who aren't into it at this point. Just like I'm all in 100%. Yeah, the solo f***ing rips. And I think also like, what, 2007? I don't think many power pop, pop punk bands are really rocking out saxophones yet. Like you know, outside of the ska subgenre or whatever. And yeah, I think a few years later, Katy Perry might toss a sax in or maybe <laughs> Miley. I kind of forget. But there was like, before Clarence Thomas of E Street Band fame died, I think there was like, he made around, maybe it was a Gaga song, but he made the rounds a little bit. There's a little sax, you know, maybe in the mid 2010s. But yeah, this was, I don't want to say ahead of his time. It was just like, fit the song perfectly so Bryce used it seemingly that's what I'm going to go with like it was the right it was the right call it wasn't even like oh there's a little sax hook that's playing through he's fucking <laughs> ripping the hell out of this thing yeah it's a it's like the SNL opener right it's like the theme like yeah. the sound of what you would associate SNL with like this dude is wailing <laughs> on the saxophone um right. and it all comes from the magic piano which is kind of you got obviously the theme is pretty obvious at this point um but it all makes sense um, yeah, they're dancing up a storm and there's like a homeless guy at one point. Um, and then weirdly, this is an interesting moment for the magic piano itself. Red coats from the revolutionary war <laughs> peek out with like white wigs, powdered wigs. And they say, no, <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> go back down <laughs> this whole storyline of inclusion. Um, it's like, man, no, no time travel guys. Let's, let's play by the rules here. It's like, okay. I was like, this would be an interest. This would have been an interesting turn. They're like, no, nah, <laughs> you Bryce, you devil, you time traveling, you know, like you are going to, you know, false God. It's like, Hey, listen, British people, if you're going to cause a fight in the church of Bryce, we're going to have to <laughs> throw fisticuffs quite honestly. So they leave, they get out. There's no, like, everyone's still dancing. It's all good. Um, yeah, I think my my main note here is if if the general statement of the video is that this Rocket Summer song is the ultimate unifier, <laughs> then I have to agree. It's a fucking <laughs> banger. It will bring world peace. It will unite us all. It is honestly incredible. Like so I, I mentioned like at the top of the show, like the best version of what it is. There are so many music videos that have tried to do this thing of everyone is traveling to the music video shoot we saw it in detroit by fireworks great escape by boys like girls they do it in feeling this people are running they're joining with the band in the video and i think this video is the most fun right the, the magic piano people keep crawling out of it it's people from all different walks of life the old people you have like the person who i think is supposed to be the gangster ho like helping the kind of beaten down homeless guy like he has his arm around him he's helping him into the crowd you got skateboarders you have break dancers you have the rockabillies doing their like flapper dance or whatever everyone is expressing themselves in the way that they want to and everyone is included it's like an explosion of like inclusiveness and positivity and it rocks so fucking hard right we get the chorus two more times and the solo, the saxophone comes back just shredding like a 1990s like sitcom theme song style. Bah, bah, bah! <laughs> just like fucking <laughs> wailing. And like as if this chorus needed any more energy, here's some more. And it just keeps building. People are dancing. It, yeah, 
it's the ultimate it goes unifier. full lithium can we yeah <laughs> i'm in uh yes uh, i would also be glad to be in that room dancing also it is also an approachably uh, catchy song oh yeah um, how about how about the can we talk about the chorus real quick or the, yeah. the words I, I should say so much love in you there's so much love in you i'm amazed i'm talking to you uh help me out you look like the songs i've heard my whole life coming true yeah any thoughts at all about that you know at first glance i was like really rocket summer is that the f-ing thing we're doing usually <laughs> like when you're a teen you're like hesitant you know like a little worried about bands with the word summer in the title um but <laughs> It, you know, upon like we said, upon further review, this is the best song ever written. So kind of <laughs> forgive it pretty quick. Um, but yeah, it's like definitely high school crush material, as Dylan mentioned in his tweet. So okay, I do want to mention. I did we pick this song on our Valentine's Day high school mixtape draft? Because if not, shut the show down, man. We fucking failed so bad. But I remember like 2008. I. <laughs> finally like was single for a minute and there was this girl that we both went to high school with that i was like crazy about and i remember listening to this song and really connecting with the line i'm amazed that i'm talking to you um that is like i mean i held that nervous energy to this day um but especially as like a 17 year old like there's a cute girl and she like doesn't scoff at me when I open my mouth. Like I loved that line so much. I'm amazed that I'm talking to you. And um, yeah, I remember like really, really just loving that, like feeling it. I I was so excited when I got to feel that line after like, you know, a couple months or a year of knowing the song, but like being in this weird, super long five-year relationship with someone we didn't even like each other. And um, all of a sudden the song made sense and I like loved it all over again so good oh, yeah so good you passed so good. passed dylan's test um yeah there, <laughs> i think there's you know eventually we'll have to get off the hype train i hope not um because it's been fun to just feel good <laughs> like not that we don't feel good in our real lives but um it's been fun as hell to have a little fun right i mean if we it feels kind of weird to say that but you know when you listen to give up or you listen to oh, Jesus and eventually we're gonna have to do the where you want to be episode and shit like that so like uh, eventually that's coming deja all that you know you gotta f- we'll have to relive some things which we're doing it for you um <laughs> uh but it's been fun f- between forever the sickest kids and this song to just be like f-ing, let's f-ing do it let's yeah man yeah. yeah it's been fun um i love the song it's one of those songs i think where obviously if you had to like do your desert island thing i'm i don't know if i bring the record i don't know you know but like while you're listening to it, you're like, I don't want to leave this place. This, and, and it yeah, ends too soon, yeah. always. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like this weird special treat or something. It's like, um, it's almost better when you discover it again so you can fully fall back in there. I, I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say, but. I'm going to be spinning this record for a bit over the next couple of yeah. weeks. I, I need it right now, <laughs> like really badly. Yeah, there you go. So really happy we did the episode when we did because it's just been like buried in like you know yeah such heartbreaking songs (laughs) yeah can we do a a quick bonus question yeah what the else was in that piano (laughs) oh you know there weren't enough if if a dog if a three-legged dog came out in this video we would have had everything (laughs) from the greatest game video just to know he's safe <laughs> he's like the uh the true time hopper between music videos in our in our universe of uh emo it's like oh my god he he actually yeah he would have told uh the great escape concert goers like no go without me i have other places to be i have to go tell some kid that maddie b and the dirty pickles are good at what they do i will take the form of a human for that conversation I, that's good enough for me that's good enough for me he probably was like F- you red coats i gotta go to you know anyway <laughs> Keep colonizers. Jesus. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's. You want to do song of the week? Is that is that good? I don't know. I, it feels weird to be you know kind of zip through it like that. But other than pure gushing this episode, I have not added a ton. I'll admit. Yeah. No. Uh, so I feel kind of like we cheated this week a little bit. It's just like let's have all the fun in the world <laughs> and not remember any weird high school. <laughs> 
Just so, so good. I, so good. It's like a week a week where we didn't take off, but it feels nice to take off and not have to be like, remember that time we were so embarrassed? You know, it was just like, this song is fun. One time I rode my fucking bike. I got so fucking far. <laughs> and I scrubbed the floors. <laughs> <laughs> I am my first job. I'm scrubbing some <laughs> I'm telling you, the Church of Bryce, nothing has made me feel more pure and whole and ready and able than f***ing Bryce of the Rocket Summer. This Ugh. song in particular. Okay. Incredible. I don't even want to give a song of the week because they're not going to be able to compare to this one. But <laughs> <laughs> if I had to, if I had to, um, do, I, do, I'm going to go back with Jurassic Park by Stan Atlantic. I know it just... I just recommended. it. I think it, you've like, said that for more weeks than you think. Like, I think you did it for the first time last week, but I'm pretty sure that was the second or third time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Rightfully this is, so. This is the second so. time. This is the second time. It is okay. another okay. very feel-good jam, but the lyrics and the video are not so uplifting. So uh, I don't know if they can compare. Just really good. I'm loving the song i cannot wait for stan stan atlantic's album um hopefully we're still going to be interviewing the producer on the making of the record so maybe we'll have that to look forward to really excited okay give me this is one of those ones where i haven't listened to it yet but i want to so i'm doing this to remind myself i do that every once in a while if you listen to the show (laughs) every time um every time no not every time there was a time not too long ago where i'd never had one anyway so um (laughs) They were just like, hey, I've been reading a book. I don't know. F- it. Sorry. That was before we started taking the show seriously, like I guess probably a year or two ago now. But for the we were we were lost souls, not yet open to the teachings of Bryce. Uh, now we are fully <laughs> engaged. Um track two off of Women in Music, part three by Heim. It's called The Steps. Um, you know, I this is one of those, you know, records that I haven't gotten to yet, but I'm very excited about. Um Dig Heim, one of the best SNL double song performances of recent memory um, mm. with with uh, one of their past albums, Days Are Gone. Um, I'm, I'm excited for it. I don't know. I like Haim. We've, dis- we've discussed this as friends before. I'm into, I, I dig Haim. They're super good. Like The lot. Wire might be one of my top 10, ten songs of the decade. Oh, wow. If I had to say. Okay. I know. Yeah. I'm just saying. We'll eventually, we'll eventually, if people ask for it enough, start to do years past 2010 and maybe even before 2000. I know you're dying to do an end of the state thing. Oh, tease, 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 question mark. Oh, tease, tease, and, tease. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but it came out in 99, so we've been steering clear. Anyway, uh, yeah, Heim. Dope. Well, we're going to go to the post show for our Patreon supporters. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at underscore reminiscent FM. Uh, let us know if you are willing to be a convert to the church of Bryce. Well, we, we will be accepting new members. Um, and for a nominal fee, <laughs> just kidding. No, <laughs> Bryce would never, Bryce would never. <laughs> um, what we're going to talk about in the post show this week is how nervous slash excited we are to do our 182nd mm. episode. Oof. How spoilers, many? What, spoilers, what's the number, spoilers. Tom? 182. Yeah, we're going to have to do something special. Mm, I wonder think. what that could be. We're going to talk about it. All right. I love you, man. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everybody. It was a fun couple weeks in a row here. And uh, yep. we'll be back next week with a celebration of the show. And I'm very excited for it. Yep, yep. Love you, dude. Love Bye. you all. See you. Bye. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. What a great song. What a fun video. Such a feel good vibe. I long for the day we can all climb out of a piano together and dance as one. Hit us up on Twitter at underscore reminiscent FM. Let us know who introduced you to this band the first time you heard the song. You can listen to the post show on Patreon, patreon.com slash reminiscent But more than anything else, we just want to talk to you about the episode. So hit us up on Twitter. We love you all. Stay safe. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.